that funny. <clears throat> Ready? Yep. Okay, I'm gonna go this way. Or do you, no, no, this, do you want me to go this way? Sure. Okay, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> oh What's up, everybody? Coming back. Hey, guys. Hey, y'all. Who's here? Boom, boom, boom. Back at you. So, Eric and I are here. We're swinging around like monkeys. Monkeying around. Here to talk to you guys about some fun stuff today. You about know. the ketogenic diet. Yeah, and if it's right for you or not. Yes. So, my name is Lisa Scott. I'm a registered dietitian. I'm Eric Bustillo, also a registered dietitian, and we're both certified in sports nutrition and personal training. Yes. Oh my God. Crazy. So crazy. Crazy. Yes. So, we're here, guys, to talk to you about the ketogenic diet. We're going to go over if it's right for you um, and just tell you some of the basics about it. And if you've experienced it, you can also let us know what your um, experiences have been with it. And there's people in the background working out, so. So if you hear the We noise, might call them out in, yeah. in a minute. Or cheer for them to like say, you know, go, push yourselves, you got yeah. this. Like we're, on, gonna, we're gonna show you guys. Yeah, they are. See, look at that. Oh my gosh. Here you go, DJ. Get that rope wow, it's one of our own coaches. Yeah, doing this. How thing. crazy. Working out in between, so he's got in some between clients PT. afterwards. I mean, you can't it's knock the hustle. Keto? You what? can't knock the hustle. So you know keto? No, it's not keto. I'm gonna go this way, Eric, because okay. I'm just staying on this side. Yeah, sounds good. So we're gonna switch. Whatever you say, boss. Yeah. All right, guys. So we're going to begin by talking about what is the actual ketogenic diet. So the ketogenic diet is really just a high-fat diet. The classic ketogenic diet is consisted of originally with about 75% fat, 20% protein, and only 5% of carbs. So imagine you're eating just fat really throughout the day. And what was it originally made for? So originally it was made to help with uh, epilepsy, right? So if individuals were suffering from seizures on a regular basis, uh, this was used as a medical nutrition therapy to help reduce the, the seizures. And they've actually found that going on a ketogenic diet for individuals who do have epilepsy, um, the keto diet is actually better than just about any medication that is out there as far as helping children and adults manage their their seizures too and just another fun fact when it first 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 came out like in 19 whenever it was they were using it as 90 percent fat, fat and the rest right. of it was like six percent protein it was something insane right but, yeah that makes you know. sense right so so if you're thinking about initially what it is it's not really an enjoyable type of diet right because, because you're literally eating oils coconut oil um avocados avocado oil it's just it's Butter really a, yeah it's really really a therapeutically high fat diet but what happened with recent times is that it's kind of like when the big atkins craze was around and everybody lost a bunch of weight during atkins because the in initial first two weeks i believe two weeks of atkins is no carbs whatsoever yeah. so what happens is for every one gram of glycogen that's the stored glucose we hold in our muscles and our liver we hold about three to four grams of water so imagine if you're losing, if you're getting rid of that glycogen stores, you're getting rid of all those glucose stores because you're not eating any carbohydrates, you're going to be dumping a lot of water weight. And I mean, you can lose up to seven, maybe it's even 10 pounds in a week yeah. if you have a lot of um, glycogen on you. So this is one of the biggest things with the ketogenic diet that people are experiencing because again, you're not eating any um, starchy carbs in the ketogenic diet, you're only eating carbs that are coming from vegetables. So in that initial week or the initial two weeks you do end up losing a lot of water weight not necessarily fat initially because you're draining all that water off of you and let it out go ahead <laughs> bless you thank you <laughs> another thing that we'll notice with uh with the ketogenic diet is especially in those first few days yeah uh, a lot of individuals experience uh and not just ketogenic this is when you go lower carb as well when you take out the carbohydrates that you're you're typically having some folks will get very irritable uh, so they'll be very crabby in a bad mood um, they'll get headaches uh, some people actually also get sick like they get a cold 
um, the keto flu the keto flu as they call it right. but what really happens here is that your body has to start getting adapted to not using carbohydrates as their main fuel source yeah so now you start switching over to the ketones and the body kind of goes through this shift of headaches irritability and so on and so forth right so I people do experience that I will say when I did it I tried it for a good solid two weeks and maybe because it was only two weeks, I didn't really experience any of that. My energy maybe was a little bit lower when I was like trying to CrossFit and do that higher intensity yeah, exercise. For sure. But I didn't experience those symptoms. I actually felt really, really good on it. And you know, now that you say that, I, uh, now this isn't any hardcore research. It's really more anecdotal mm -hmm. that I saw with uh, a few patients of mine that depending on the person, mm -hmm. um, some folks would experience the much lower energy they would have headaches and all of that right. uh, and it would last infrequently right it would come and go over maybe a period of one to three weeks mm -hmm. but interestingly enough there were some people who they would they might have felt a little bit lower energy on the first one or two days but like on day three or four and moving forward they felt great they felt like really really good we have comments. Oh, oh my god, hi. Yeah. So for those of you watching on other platforms, we have Instagram going on over here yes. so we might mm -hmm. interact with them a little bit. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you'll you'll find different experiences and um, you know if you've never done it before, you can experiment with it. Just because you know you're saying you're gonna do keto doesn't mean you have to be keto for like the rest of your life. Like yeah. you can play around with it. Obviously, you know, do it in a safe manner with you know, if, especially if somebody's monitoring you is better, but we can definitely play around with it. Um, one thing, the, the one thing that also works for a lot of people is that once they go keto, they eliminate all a bunch of the crap that they're eating. So they eliminate donuts, they eliminate um, whole wheat flour, whole wheat bread, crackers, cakes. It's just like a big, you know, big elimination um, part of the diet that you have. So that also causes success in a lot of people because we tend to be addicted. Some people are addicted to cereals and those starchy carbs and those just are gonna, again, if we're not using them, they're gonna turn into fat. So if you eliminate that big food group of all those processed foods and you start eating vegetables and protein and fats, people have also a lot of success with it because they're actually eating higher quality foods. And I think that also kind of helps transition into how keto helps with, uh, with weight loss, I think, right. overall. Because now you have individuals who are consuming really high amounts of vegetables, carbohydrates yeah. or starches and those and they switch over now and they're having vegetables maybe more wholesome foods right so it's almost like by default by being on keto right now you're eating more fat which fat tends to be a little bit more satiating so it helps you stay feeling full for longer yes exactly and you're cutting back on other carbs that um, other calories that you may have been consuming through carbohydrates so now you're feeling fuller for longer and just eating less overall right yeah, and I will say too, just from again speaking to people and experiencing it, because you're not constantly having that increase in blood sugar and that fall in blood sugar from eating processed or refined or a lot of carbohydrates, it tends to also kind of regulate your hormone, um, your hunger levels and your hormones as well, like your insulin levels, because you're staying a little bit more even keel throughout the day, so you're actually not as hungry. And also, when you're eating a higher fat diet, the fat takes a lot longer to break down and it's a lot more energy dense. So. It is a good way, like if you feel like you're kind of being, you're like addicted to carbs and you, you can't get over it, um, it is a nice way, you know, temporarily, um, uh, maybe not long term, but it is a nice way to kind of get rid of those triggers that you have. So, go on that. so how do we know if we're in ketosis? Now, if we know, we know we're in ketosis officially if you're testing it on, on the strips. So, those guys right there. Yes. So, uh, have you um, used them before? I have, yeah. I've been using these actually like this week because I was trying to experiment. Nice. Um, so one thing is you can't really feel if you're in ketosis and people say, oh, I'm keto. And then I, and I asked them, I was like, oh, so you're testing your urine or you're testing your blood. And they'll say, no, 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 I'm just, I'm just, I'm not. I'm like, okay, so you're really not in ketosis because you might feel the effects. You might feel the br brain clarity. You might feel like you're like losing all this water weight, but really you have to test your body unless you've been in a ketogenic diet for like, I don't know, maybe years, maybe a year or two years, like a legit ketogenic diet, you're, you've been in ketosis, then you might be able to go a little more by feel, but really you have to test your blood. So I'm gonna show you guys. This is, um, these are called True Plus Ketone Strips. So all it is, 
is you take this guy out and you pee on it. You put your urine on this. <laughs> yes, I have been doing it. And then you just compare to see if you're in ketosis. So negative or trace, then you know the darker it gets, then the more ketones you have in your body. So a more accurate way to do it is actually to, you know how people have the blood glucose glucometer? So instead of that, there's one that actually does it for ketone levels. And so the ketone levels, it's 1.6 to 2.9, or if you're three and above, then you're in like in a deeper state of ketosis. But if you want to be in ketosis, guys, you have to test. Unless you're an expert and you've been in ketosis for years, you know exactly what you're doing. In the beginning, go buy yourself these. This is a cheaper option. Um, the Keto Mojo, I wanna say it's around 60 bucks and then you have to buy the test strips. And the test strips is what gets a little bit more expensive because they end up being, I think around a dollar a piece. I can't, I can't remember exactly. I don't know the price of that. Yeah, I looked it up. I haven't done that, but this guy, these are maybe $10, maybe under. I can't remember because I bought them a while ago when I was doing it. Um, I think some people also, well not some people, pretty much everyone, when they're on, a, on a lower carb and especially when they're in ketosis, uh, they have that, it's like a keto breath. Uh -huh, so yeah. it, it has this uh, distinct smell to yeah. it. Uh, not to say that that's exactly how you can diagnose or say Hell, if someone right. is on ketosis, but that's also a, a telltale way of, of knowing too. But this is the most accurate way. Yeah, it's the most accurate way. So and other ways of getting ketosis is obviously getting, you know, taking the carbs out of your diet. But what also <laughs> helps so, you know, even if you're going to get ketosis for a therapeutic effect, another thing that helps is also by including intermittent fasting with it because um, then you're giving yourself a little bit longer time with that food and it will get you into ketosis quicker. And also doing longer steady state cardio. So like going on a one and a half hour walk or getting in the bike or getting the rower, but doing it at a lower intensity. Um, that also tends to get you into ketosis faster. So. Some people, I don't know, maybe if their glycogen stores are really low, they can get into ketosis maybe within a few days. Other people might literally take them two weeks of doing all those things, maybe the intermittent fasting of the higher fat diet, no carbs, and a little bit steady state cardio. Um, it might take you a little bit longer to get in that true state of ketosis. So it's not something that happens overnight. And just because you didn't eat carbs one day doesn't mean you're in ketosis. So yeah. don't say that. And just keep in mind that everyone, sound silly. <laughs> everyone is a little bit different. So there are some people that maybe in four to seven days can adapt quickly. Yeah. I would say typically speaking, the, the human physiology as far as getting into a, a ketogenic state, it takes anywhere between seven and 21 days. So yeah. give yourself some time of doing it accurately, yeah. right? Um, I think you also brought up a good point as far as the intermittent fasting goes. Yeah. I feel like they usually go well hand in hand. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Because I think, yeah, let it out. <laughs> let it out. Let's get some juju, juju sneeze. I'm trying, to, I'm trying, I'm trying. Allergies today. Because um, I think one of the, the benefits behind the ketogenic diet, and we'll kind of go a little bit more into right, if it's right benefits. for you or if it's not, um, but since you brought up the intermittent fasting, we know that intermittent fasting can help with uh, inflammation. Right. right. Bringing down inflammation. Right. Um, the ketogenic diet also has this... Uh, anti-inflammatory component to it as well so when you put both of them together yeah. it's a nice little hand in hand yeah they do and actually there's um one program that I was trying like again I was experimenting I was seeing if it works and I was having actually a lot of gut issues at that time and the protocol was to go intermittent fasting and to get ketosis and it did work I mean putting those things together does get you into the ketogenic state a lot faster um, if you, you, you can tell I have allergies and at that time I was having even more allergies. I would wake up in the morning, I would not have any allergies whatsoever, my nose would be completely clear. Um, I'd actually wake up with more energy. Again, this is a two week trial. Um, I can't say anything like, I think I'll, maybe I did it for even like a month, but I just remember waking up in the first two weeks and really not having those extra like inflammatory markers that I know I tend to get. Um, Again, doing it, yeah, and the weight loss was great. I ended up losing some weight, but for me, it was more, really more important for like the therapeutic aspect of it, the gut health um, and like the allergy, really the inflammatory, really the inflammatory aspect. And because when you're when you're also adding the um, intermittent fasting with the ketosis, the intermittent fasting does also help to kill off any kind of damaged cells you have in your body through the autophagy process. So it's like a program 
you know, the cell death that once the cell is bad and no longer needs to be in your body, it helps starve it off and then you can just, you know, it dies off and you can kind of like, you know, recycle it through your body and it goes away. And that's, that's actually how the, the ketogenic diet started getting introduced to help uh, individuals with oh. cancer. Okay. Right, so using it for some kind of medical nutrition therapy for individuals who have cancer, because what happens with cancer, the cells, they continue, they, they don't die. Right. The cells continue to grow or proliferate and whatnot. Um, you obviously want those cells to, to die off. So by incorporating a ketogenic diet mm. uh, and perhaps also fasting. Now keep in mind, this is not a cure for cancer or anything along those lines, but right. it's some type of therapeutic uh, use of, of, of nutrition. Um, right. It actually helps with getting those cells to kind of die off so yeah. that they don't feed on other kinds of nutrients that you might be consuming right the ketogenic diet is beneficial in that regard yeah um <clears throat> and again and another thing i will say that it is positive for is like somebody if you are having inflammation maybe you're eating gluten maybe you're eating whole wheat bread maybe you're having cereal and you just you know you can't stop you're kind of addicted to those foods i mean if you are if you do commit to to being keto then you're really forced to take all those elements out and if you feel better without them you know even if even if it's for that two week one month whatever six month period and you're able to do it and you're able to commit to it and it does help you in that healthy manner then i would say yes you can go for it you know but like you don't know unless you try it like if you if you've never done gluten free you don't know if it's going to benefit you if you've never done like a higher fat diet you can't just say well, I don't think it'll work for me because you haven't done it, you know? So yeah. you really have to experiment with it if it's something that you're willing to do. Most definitely. So let's talk a little bit more about the benefits of it. Let's do it, yeah. yeah. I, um, I, I think that it's always important to note that some benefits, obviously everything depends on what our goals are. Yeah. Uh, if someone is doing it for body composition, meaning they want to lose a little bit of fat, a little bit of weight, whatever it might be, um, we kind of touched upon it earlier that almost by default, you're gonna start consuming right. less calories overall. Um, other benefits behind it, uh, I think it's also important to note that the, the true ketones, mm -hmm, right? Because mm -hmm. ketones, they kind of start replacing the oh, glucose yes. that, we're, that we're eating, right? So when we're eating the carbohydrates, obviously that converts into sugar and glucose mm -hmm. in the body. So it's almost as if ketones now replace the carbohydrates and the glucose. So they're a new source of energy. That's why I'll tell people that uh, carbohydrates they're not they're not essential for life like we can make energy out of the proteins that we eat or the fats that we eat so we don't technically need to eat carbs although I advise against not eating carbs right. um, but that's exactly where ketones come into play uh, they help with our overall brain function mm -hmm. uh, with our energy levels as well um, and it does depend on on our goals you know if you're looking to, to lose weight it's a good strategy if you do have some kind of illness it's a good right. strategy like as therapeutic. well. I think, therapeutic. I think I sure. think it's really important to remember and go back to it that it is a therapeutic diet in and of itself. So if you're like a really healthy athlete, like maybe some of these guys are working out, um, I would not recommend the ketogenic diet for them because they're also performance-based athletes. So for, for high intensity um, exercises like CrossFit or even, um, I don't know, sprinting, like ketosis is not the way to go because your, your body burns up that sugar so quickly you actually do need to consume carbohydrates but if your main goal again is not performance right it's maybe it is a temporary you know uh, body composition or uh, it, again more for a therapeutic or a gut healing or inflammatory then that's where it's gonna be beneficial yeah. right so this is kind of I guess we're getting to like is keto right for you um, you have to again examine what you're doing it for and you, again I'm gonna say it again 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 I'm gonna say that it's a therapeutic diet and it's a very restrictive diet so let's say I've been in ketosis for two weeks and I decide to have a donut or I decide to have maybe a banana even better I'm gonna kick myself out of ketosis yeah that I'm gonna kick myself out of it meaning that I'm gonna to have to work either another week or a few days or maybe another two weeks just to get myself back into it so if that is stressful on you if you're like okay I want to be in ketosis but I want to have the chip and you're just having an issue with that that maybe it's not the right diet for you also if you've ever had any kind of history of uh, an eating disorder or like a really restrictive um, you know eating habits I it's probably say it's also not for you if it's gonna be something that stresses you out and it's gonna yeah. be too mentally draining because you know if you're eating carbohydrates your whole life and all of a sudden 
and all of a sudden you have to you know completely give them up and commit to something else if it becomes too mentally stressful for you then i would say then maybe not maybe not the best idea for you as well yeah, again having like an eating, dis an eating disorder background for sure because it just ends up being another burden on you that it's like you know something else that right. i gotta do and take care of and manage uh, i think it's also not for individuals that have the this predisposition to uh, having poor heart health right okay. so like high cholesterol levels right. um because even though some individuals might swear by the ketogenic diet and that's perfectly fine mm -hmm. we still have to recognize that high consumption of saturated fats mm -hmm. is never really going to be good for us do we have to consume saturated fats yeah they're important don't get me wrong cholesterol is important it serves right. multiple functions in the body as far as uh, hormone health and those things uh, but we also have to keep within measure because when we start consuming too too much saturated fat we right. know that it's atherogenic right so that means that it starts causing maybe plaque buildup in our arteries which could lead to other detrimental health events like a heart attack right and it, it goes back to guys that the keto diet is not a high protein diet. Mm -hmm. It does not mean you're eating bacon and then fat and then you're eating steak and then fat. No, literally it's 20% of your diet is coming from protein. The rest is fat. So everybody, again, and this is just the stuff that I hear on a daily basis. Like, oh, I can eat bacon, I can eat steak. You still have to eat vegetables. You still have to eat different sources. You can't just eat meat and fat and just, um, you know, expect to be 100% healthy. You still have to eat vegetables. So, uh, I think that the main drive too that I that I want to let everybody know is that really, you know, bringing more truth to it, what it is, and just because you're eating a low carb, you know, doesn't mean you're eating a ketogenic diet. Yeah. Um, again, low carb is great. I I love low carb. I personally, I mean, it works. You know, yeah, you take a lot of carbs on your diet. You add more veggies. You have protein. You have healthy fats, and fats are very very important for hormone production, um, and again, keeping you satiated, like your DHEA, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, testosterone, all those levels are super important for you. But with a keto diet, it's not a high protein diet and a high fat diet, okay? It's a high fat diet, low protein diet, and you know, really five, low carb. five percent minimal, yeah, like yeah. low Maybe carb. Maybe like moderate protein, really low carb. Yeah. And there are variations, so like the original diet, like Eric, we were saying, is like more of like a 90% to 75%. There are variations of a, of a ketogenic diet, and maybe for intermittent fasting and doing the variation of it, you will get into it. Um, but again, it's still, you know, the bottom line, it's still a high fat diet. So I, I don't think, you know, I think it's, if you're, if you want to try it, I think it's beneficial to experiment with it and yeah. use it as a tool. Um, it's nice even when you're traveling and you want to maybe not eat out a lot because you don't have a lot of good options So I tell my clients, you know eat more fat don't eat the stuff You'll you'll end up eating less calories while you're traveling. You won't be hungry and it just works. It's easy Maybe some people might even be fasting while they're traveling because they don't want to eat their airport food And in that sense if you have a good grip on that It's a, it's an amazing it's an amazing tool because you're not then dependent on getting food every two or three hours and it's not something you have to worry about yeah but to get to that state you have to practice and you have to experiment and you really just have to begin using it yourself it's not something i mean even when i being a dietitian i was like i kind of had to figure it out i had to figure out okay what am i going to eat i can eat avocado i can eat my little seaweed chips um you know just kind of like figuring out ways how you're still going to get calories but keep yourself um you know feeling full but without eating all this like too much like weird stuff all the other stuff and, yeah. and it's also beneficial that there are a lot of companies that are producing lower carbohydrate right. snacks and foods for example something Whoa. like um quest protein bars right. um, quest potato chips and and those things you even have like the halo top ice creams and all of that that right. um they're they're lower carb yeah they tend to be higher in protein which really is never a bad thing uh, just keep in mind that you're looking to have moderate protein whenever you are on a ketogenic diet. Right. Um, I think that there's also uh, much benefit to the ketogenic diet for individuals that do have issues as far as like uh, insulin resistance. Right. I think yeah. that as far as uh, uh, helping people with maybe type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I would even say women with like PCOS. Right. That they or would that benefit. Insulin control. <clears throat> exactly. So now they, they maybe start becoming a little bit more insulin sensitive uh, mm -hmm. or just respond a little bit better um, another benefit to, to the ketogenic diet is that um, 
most people who do it and do it properly, right. they find that their energy levels are pretty stable yeah. throughout the day because now they do have this better insulin or sugar control. Yeah. Um, so those are some really good benefits to it uh, right. as well. Yeah, I agree too. Um, I, I think the best thing that I like about it is it's like, it's really like a tool. Like it's another tool that we have. Like, yeah. you know, when we're talking about different diets, like some people love the vegan diet, like great, and it works for them. Um, you know, other people might, whatever, they like the paleo and they're all over that. Some people need to have the carbs, but as far as a tool, again, not for performance, but just for like everyday living and controlling hunger levels and maybe you don't have time to eat one day, you're traveling, like using the fasting and using the, you know, higher fat foods is great in times where like you're just super busy and you don't have yeah. the time. And I mean, it does, you are, you know, here's another thing about the ketogenic diet, that just because you're eating ketogenic diet, it, but if you're still overeating calories, you're still not gonna lose weight. Correct. You might lose some glycogen stores, you know, that we hold on our muscles and liver, but I've seen plenty of people that are in keto, but they're still, you know, and they, maybe they have extra weight on them. Like again, that's their choice, you know, however they wanna eat, that might not, weight loss may not be their goal. But just because you're in ketosis doesn't automatically mean you're gonna be like super ripped and shredded. You can, sure. it's still calories that you're overeating. If you're overeating fat, you're still gonna keep the weight on you, period. Yeah. You know, it's like, even if I can give somebody <clears throat> macros and they can be super, super low in carb and whatever, uh, you know, moderate protein and fat, but if you're still overeating, even though you're, you're overeating healthy that. stuff, like you're eating broccoli and you know, boiled chicken. If you're still eating too much of it, if you're overeating calories, you're not gonna lose weight. And that's a good point that you bring up because there are a lot of people that I'll see like on the internet and whatnot and, and forums and those things that will say calories uh, don't matter. Right. The only thing that matters is what you're eating. And they, they both matter, but first and foremost, like Lisa just mentioned, it has to be, Calibro. there has to be a deficit if you want loss, and it has, it has to, to be a, be a surplus deficit. if you want more. Like, it depends what your goals are. But just eating fat or just eating protein or just carb, whatever it is, yeah. it's not gonna work as far, as far as fat loss goes if you are over consuming. For example, if you should only eat 2,000 calories and you're eating 2,700 of pure fat and protein, right you're probably not gonna lose weight, you'll probably put on weight. Yeah, and you might be in ketosis, right? You might get in that state eventually, yeah. but still, if you're overeating calories, then you're overeating calories. And if you're doing, if you're overeating calories on a ketogenic diet, you're probably a champ, because to eat that much fat and not feel mm -hmm. full and just keep on eating, yeah. I mean, either there's something wrong, or, <laughs> or I don't know, you just really yeah. love food, I don't know. So um, then it's something that you guys can experiment with too, you know, we want to give you as much information is if you want to try it, start tracking in my fitness pal. Um, you have to commit to it, you know, just like anything else, just like you commit to workout program, commit, if you want to do it, commit to it. Um, go to my fitness pal and start track for at least three days, at least three days what you're eating. So you can see, oh, am I, what's the percentage of carbs I'm eating? What's the percentage of fat? And then you can slowly begin to tweak those numbers into maybe decreasing the carbs and increasing the fat and keeping your protein the same. But without knowing where you are initially, it's kind of, I feel like, I don't know, you're kind of like throwing yourself into it if you don't yeah. really know where you're starting. You so want to take guesswork Like out. three days, just track, you know? And tracking, it might be, just the tracking part might be really hard for some people. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, yeah. you know, start slow. You can start with some baby steps, but it, really it's like you're kind of like biohacking your own nutrition so if you're interested in doing it then just start by tracking and being aware of what you're eating first of all one of the main benefits to tracking is keeping in mind that you you can't really manage what you don't measure right that's right. this old saying uh, and it's true you know we, by taking the guesswork out of what you're doing whether it's tracking your nutrients or if you're getting blood work done or if you're using a scale or you're getting your body fat done the more data you can have then the better right. as far as the recommendations that either if you're working with a professional or even just for yourself to know it's only going to help you out right uh, one other thing that i wanted to mention about products as far as the ketogenic diet is uh -huh. concerned um, they have come out with these things called uh, ketone salts or ketone esters um, and those could actually help you get into ketosis a little bit faster and if it is something that you want to try and you are going to be exercising uh, taking them could actually help out as far as keeping your energy levels up during your your training session. So that's something else to to be on the lookout for if you wanted to give it a shot. Like, let's talk about like exogenous ketones. Exogenous ketones, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So taking them 
exogenous. Yeah, I have not tried those. I want to try them. Yeah. I've been like researching them a little, but I personally have not tried them, so. Yeah, yeah, and you know, it's just, it's something that could potentially benefit those individuals that mm -hmm. maybe they, they are insulin resistant. They're having trouble with right. their sugar levels. Uh, who knows, maybe uh, as far as managing hunger and cravings, yeah. because now there's less fluctuation of the sugar levels. It could help out with that. And then from a performance standpoint, the ketone salts and esters, so those exogenous ketones that you'll take, um, they could actually help with keeping your energy levels high and getting you quicker into a, a ketogenic state. Right. Yeah. Awesome. And that's it. I think we covered everything. Yeah, I think for the most part. But if you guys Yay. have questions, you know, send us an email. Lisa, what's your, what's your email address? So my email is Lisa Scott Nutrition, and that's L I Z A S C O T T Nutrition at gmail.com. And mine is Eric the Dietitian. That's E R I K T H E D I E T I T I A N. A dietitian with a T, dietitian not with, with a, a C. Two T's in it. So Eric the Dietitian at gmail.com. On Instagram, Lisa Fit, L I Z A Fit. And uh, on Instagram at Eric Bustillo. We hope this was helpful for you guys. Yes, if you have questions, you can, you know, type in the little comments or send yep. us an email. And we hope you enjoyed it. Well, let's do our, let's do our send up. Wait, I want to go that way. That, I'll go this way. Okay, ready? One, two, two three. One. Okay. All right. Perfect. How do I say this? And 37 seconds. And.